Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Black Steel Katana, which is a weapon that you can actually get right here in the Iron Keep. It's a drop from the Alan Knights, and it's not all that common, but farm the area a bit and you'll find one. Alternatively, you can pick one up in the Majula chest, or at least you could have, provided you got it in time. It was released as a white steel katana, a reskin. White only in in uh, color, not in name. But uh, it was released with one of the DLCs and then re-released with the most recent patch. So I'm actually not sure if it's there still or not, but it's worth checking. It's in the Majula chest, for the record, if it's still there. So. Go check that out if you're interested. You might get lucky, it might still be there. Anyway, the the Black Steel Katana. Now, this is a weapon that is fairly common. It isn't as common as it used to be. When it was originally put into the Majula chest, there were builds using this thing everywhere. I mean, it essentially gave new builds an excuse to pick up a katana right away. And, I mean, I guess that's a good thing, kinda? But... Not really, because people just picked it up and went with it and never tried out anything but, so it is what it is. Either way, let's get started with the weapon itself. The Black Steel Katana requires 14 strength and 25 dexterity in order to wield. It has no strength scaling and an S in dexterity. The physical base damage of the weapon is 190, and for me the attack rating is 445 with a ring of blades and Flynn's ring. The counter strength of the weapon is on the lower end for katanas at 130. The poise damage is <coughs> excuse me. The poise damage is 20 per hit and the weight is 8 units. Now, like most katanas, the biggest pro of this weapon is going to be one of two things. It's going to be either the combos or the counter strength. Because the counter strength on this weapon is lower than most of the other katanas, I would say that the biggest pro in this case is the combo ability. Now, when I'm using this weapon, I'm actually doing something wrong with it. When you're going for your R2 attacks with this weapon, you should unlock, because you can aim them a lot more reliably than when you're just target locking. It's a very good thing to do, and then you can target lock after the first hit and get that guaranteed second hit, which is always a good plan. So shame on me for not doing that, it didn't really occur to me while I was using the weapon, and I just, you know, I already have the video recorded, I'm not going to go back just for that one thing, so. Anyway, other pros of the weapon, in addition to the combos and the counter strength, you've got some pretty decent damage on it, but really, the big deal here would be the counter strength in terms of damage. So, yeah, I've got 445 attack rating, but I'm hitting 600s because of that counter strength, and that's a good thing. Now, the biggest con of this weapon is actually something related to the moveset of the katana. It's got a good moveset, and that's great. It's got a good combo ability, and that's great as well. However, the hitboxes are actually what the issue would be. Now, when you're using this weapon, the hitboxes are... I, they're, uh, they're at an angle. They're a diagonal. And because they're diagonal, you can really have some issues hitting people with your R1 attacks. Now what I mean by that, what I mean by that is if you're just spamming away with it, the person can strafe to the side and they'll actually be perfectly fine. They they won't be able to be touched because your hitboxes are going diagonally. So something to watch out for. And honestly not a terrible thing in my opinion because it encourages use of the R2 attacks as well as the R1s, but that's just my opinion. So Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful in one way or another, and I will see you all next time.